Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Honor and praise be unto his name. Jesus Christ said many things while he was on earth. One of the things he said was, if I be lifted up from this earth, talking about the cross, that he will draw all. Let, you guys aren't following me yet. He goes, when this is completed, I'll come back to life and my spirit will show up in the earth. And I will continue to draw men, women, boys, girls, black, white, pink, purple, blue. Are you following me? The drug addicted, the, the homeless, the hopeless, the hurting, the depressed, the Mary Magdalene's, the woman at the well, the demoniacs. All right, turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 4. Promise you, I'll, I'll be done on time. All right? If you, if you cooperate, we'll be done. If not, we got two hours, okay? No, we you know that. Not true. Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 16. And if you wonder why his accent is different, it's because I'm from down south, literally. Um, off the tip of Florida, that's kind of like really southern. And so, um, you know, forgive my accent, all right? Here this morning with the team, incredible team. Thank you, I could what Pastor Bob said. You guys have been outstanding from the get-go. Um, just Pastor Bob and his precious family today. We have safe places and spaces for those who, who are unable to really and truly do life on life's terms, right? The sacrifices they've made. And um, all of us are standing here today as a result of their faithfulness to the Lord. You saw what the women did, right? It's because somebody paid the price. You hear me? Somebody paid the price and keep paying the price for the men as well. My family and I, we, were, we, we came here. My wife is here. My children are here and my, my mother-in-law. And it's because the man of God heard clearly from the Spirit of God sent for that Jamaican family. And he brought us here in 2012. So we've been with the man of God and his family for a while. Love the ministry. And so you know I'm also a graduate. This hurting, hopeless, hopeless man walked into the doors of Teen Challenge. Had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I would be the guy who would con you after church. I'll give you the cry and I'll watch your purse and then I'll give you a story. You give me money in return. I was that guy. But I thank God today that if any man is in Christ, come on. He's a new creature. Old things are gone. And look, look. All things are becoming new. So here we go. Um, Matthew, uh, Luke, sorry, Luke 4, 16. When he came to the village, Jesus Christ, his boyhood home, he went as usual. It was customary for him to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet, um, specifically Isaiah 61, right, was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that, um, that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll, being the gentleman he was, handed it back to the person in charge. We call them the attendant or the attendant, and he sat down gently. 
All eyes in the synagogue looked at him. You wonder why they looked at him. If you were Jewish, you understood. You would have, you would have, had, you would have had clear understanding of that statement, right? The Jewish people, they were tired of sinning and living in sin and going in and out of captivity, okay? And so, of course, the prophet Isaiah who lived some 600 plus years before the birth of Christ in the flesh, he prophesied that, no, Jesus is, is, is in the church, right? He's, he's in church. And of course, to the attendant, it was customary. They would read the scriptures. And, 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 and surprisingly, I believe, surprisingly, just in time, Jesus showed up and they were in the prophet Isaiah, the book, the scrolls. And he read it and he said to everybody there, just so you know, you don't have to look any further. I am the Messiah. Not only that, the year of Jubilee is here. I am it. It's done. It's over. And of course, I can only imagine how they must have fussed and looked at him in disgust. I made that one up, right? Yes. But I can only imagine. And so in their presence, what Jesus Christ did was he defined his ministry. If you back up a little bit, you will realize that the Spirit of the Lord who duly authorized him during his baptism, led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now that's the context. There was a lot of theological uh, conversations going on between Jesus and the devil. And of course, who won? We know it. Jesus won. Okay? And so he leaves the wilderness and as was customary, being a Jewish boy, it was his business to be in church. Church wasn't mandatory, or you could say church was a part, or the synagogues were a part of their lives. And so Jesus stood up respectfully. He didn't fuss. He didn't call anybody any names. He didn't say, I am right and you are wrong. He said, listen to me, today, this prophecy has been fulfilled. And today is the year of Jubilee. In other words, his mission was defined in their presence. I am here this morning to define our mission, which is a part or an extension of the Great Commission. You see, the Great Commission given to us by God is only great because God is... Well, you guys are good students, all right? That's why the Great Commission is great. And in extension to that, before his ascension, he said, I want you to go to his disciples, he goes, I want you to go and preach and teach and baptize. He was crystal clear. He didn't tell them to go fight with anybody there. I wonder why I am saying this, right? He didn't say, go, go make a fuss or a big deal out of this. Go in my name. And when you go, you preach, you teach, and you baptize people. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing the, the word of God. There is that I call it the imago Dei, the image of God in which we were created. When God speaks through his word, his spirit somehow supernaturally makes the connection and we are born again. You know, you think about Nick. Call him the short Nicodemus Nick. First Nick at night, by the way, copied and paste from Pastor Tim, okay? Nicodemus was an intelligent man. In other words, he dotted his I's and he crossed his T's. And now he is standing in the presence of God, the Son of God, of the, the living God. And the Son of God entertained him. As a matter of fact, Nicodemus didn't want his religious friends to see him talking with Jesus. And they were jealous of Jesus. And somehow Nicodemus realized they were jealous of Jesus. So instead of going in the daytime, he went at nighttime when they were probably asleep or probably living in hypocrisy. I don't know. But he went to Jesus. He had that conversation. And Jesus Christ gave him a good audience. He listened to him. You know, did you know that Jesus loves to listen to us? Yes. But when we speak to God and he's listening to us, remember now, he's also a God who tells us what to do. Hello? Come on. So he goes, he says to, to Nicodemus, after listening to him, 
older gentleman Nicodemus was, you must be born again. Okay? Biologically speaking, that's incorrect. Having a good, intelligent conversation, that's nonsensical. So Nicodemus did what all of us in this room would have done. What do you mean by that? I must be born. I'm older, you know, little boy. And I've never heard anybody say anything like that to me. And so I said all of that to let you know uh, that our mission is linked to all of what was said and will continue to be said until the Lord calls us home. So we are here as an extension of the kingdom of heaven in the earth. And our mission is to enlighten, to equip, and to empower people living with life-controlling problems. That's why we exist. Remember I told you that Jesus defined his mission right there in their presence. There are many different models available to us today in our world. Last year only in America, 107,600 people died from a drug overdose. Brother Richie and I did the math very quickly. Simply means we have 50 states, so it's 2,000 per state and probably 2,000 plus for some states, okay? We have a problem. It's a big problem. But I thank God that we also have a solution. And we are not telling you to take two steps or one step forward, one step backward. We tell our men and our women, you must be born again. Forget. I understand you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And hear me loud and clear. Body of Christ, be respectful. Be respectful. In other words, be Jesus in the earth. Be wise. Walk in the Spirit. Talk in the Spirit. Operate in the Spirit. But, but we must speak the truth in love. Jesus spoke truth into his heart. Changed his life forever. You read the story carefully, you'll see. After Jesus' death, who showed up? It's not a trick question. Nicodemus, he was there. A religious leader got saved. Why? He came in contact with Jesus. And so an environment is created. Delmarva Adult and Teen Challenge. As I said, you have the medical model. We use the discipleship model. I wonder why we do that. Because we're Christians. Because we were called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Pastor Bob shared his testimony of how life was. And when he encountered Jesus, you watch the videos on the thing. We're not here trying to pull the wool or a blanket over your faces. We're here to tell you that Jesus Christ is alive and he is well. And he is still concerned about human beings. And he is still involved. And if you're broken and if you're hurting or you're homeless or you're depressed, we're just here to tell you that Jesus Christ is still the bomb in Gilead. He is still the way, the truth, and the life. He is still the resurrection and the life. So, 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 I wrap this thing up very quickly. I have nine minutes. Promise you I will land this thing very quickly. So at Delmarva Adult and Teen Challenge, I told you our mission statement, very clear. Our mission is to enlighten men and women to the good news about Jesus Christ. You see, we're not into behavior modification. Let me say that one more time. Respectfully. I was searching for behavior modification when I was homeless in the street, living on the streets, living in the streets, literally. There were many times in my addiction, I was this close to finding my next meal from the garbage can. I wasn't looking for behavior modification. I needed a miracle. That's what I needed. And guess what? God in his sovereignty looked down the corridors of heaven over 64 years ago. Spoke to a man named David Wilkerson and his family. 
knowing that all of us in this room associated with Teen Challenge, life would have handed us some terrible blows. And some of us would have ended up in some places we never thought we would growing up as children. Not one of us said growing up and I grow up, I will be the best cocaine addict in Kingston, Jamaica. No way. Life happens. And in his sovereignty, he gave us the ministry over 64 years ago. And it is still moving forward 13 years ago here in Delaware. And Jesus Christ is still the answer. So what kind of good news? Well, if you're a sinner, the good news is there is forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Conditions apply though. For all those who repent and accept Christ's finished work. The good news is, for the blind, sight is available. The good news is, for those who are hurting, there is healing in Jesus. You hear me? He is still the bomb in Gilead, according to the scriptures. He is still the great physician, you hear me? In Ezekiel 36, 26, he goes, everybody else is prescribing all this kind of stuff. You need a new heart. You need that Ezekiel 36, 26. Before that, Isaiah said, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. What, what a definition. For my, oh my God. Huh? And the Lord says, I give you a new heart. Not only that, I give you a new life. And the way things were, I will also write your name in the Lamb's book. I wonder if you're following me. I call it the greatest exchange. Brothers and sisters, we are no longer ex-addicts. We are only excited about Jesus and what he has done and what he continues to do in our life. That's the good news. For the poor, the good news is, in Christ Jesus, you're rich with compound interest, by the way, for all the financial gurus, all right? Yes, for the hopeless, the good news is, there is hope and a future in Jesus. For those in captivity, like some of us were, as a matter of fact, to encapsulate our lives, Oh my God, we were able to touch on all these points. I was hopeless, hurting. I, I was broken, disgusted, and busted, and couldn't be trusted. You all wonder if you understand what I'm saying. And then, <laughs> oh my God. Eh? But the good news is, there is freedom in Jesus Christ. You see, our, our late beloved founder, the Reverend David Wilkerson, he goes, he was a man of few words and he was a prophet of God. I believe it with all my heart. He goes after he was questioned, so what's the program? He goes, Jesus is the program. Jesus is the program. You see, the Jesus factor is what produces a whopping 70 to 80 percent success rate for those that have graduated the year. It is the Jesus factor. You may say, why are you so exclusively Jesus? It's because I've tried everything else. Very simple. I drank this potion and that potion. I, I did the motion and everything. Until the Lord Jesus Christ in his grace and his mercy. He reached down. One songwriter goes, he picked me up from the miry clay. And he's planted my feet on a rock to stay. I wonder if some of us were shackled by a heavy burden any time in our lives. Beneath a load of guilt and shame. And then, you know that old hymn? And then the hand of Jesus touched me. And I am no longer the same. The, the success rate and results. 
or we just turn our eyes towards Jesus and we say thank you God for entrusting us with people's lives. You see we're just ambassadors representing Jesus in the earth. We are called to be under shepherds of God which simply means it's his sheep and all of us are sheep if you didn't know and he said I want you guys to be my under shepherd. Why? Because I want to save the lady who is in the gutter who has children and she doesn't even know how to leave there I am going to provide a place for her and somehow in my sovereignty I will allow somebody to tell her there's a place called home of hope or a brother or a sister in the church you, you don't have to struggle so long anymore there's a place in Seaford Delaware on 3rd and North Street pick up the phone give a call you just don't know the Lord might answer you on the other line you never know You just never know. So we equip those who have made a commitment to serve Jesus Christ. We do classes every day. Pastor Bob said it. Give me Jesus in the morning. Jesus at noon time. Jesus at night time. We go to church Sunday morning. We try to go to church at Sunday night when it's available. Um, as a matter of fact, because there are no Sunday night service, we go Saturday night. Or we go Sunday morning. If we have a rally, we do rallies. We do, we do Bible study on Wednesdays. It's about Jesus. Every, every turn you turn is Jesus. If you bump into your brother, you bump into Jesus because he's probably there. If the ladies bump into Jesus, is always there. We need to be born again. That's it. You must be born again. I'm not sure if you caught it in the beginning. We are a faith base residential discipleship ministry. That's who we are. And with God's help, we want to remain true to it. Exclusively Jesus. And of course, and I close with this. Two minutes. Doing good. I'm going to leave. We empower those who are spiritually hungry through a relationship with Jesus Christ and the community of believers. That's one of the reasons why our men and women go to church the way they do. Because we want them to be a part of a different crowd. We want them to know transition from that mindset. The mind that is being renewed. The heart that is being transformed. There is a group of people who are constantly being transformed and being renewed. Listen to me. Birds of a feather. You guys are A students. Love y'all. You're incredible. So watch this. We connect our students to the Father. Not a program. We create an atmosphere of grace and love. We lead sheep rather than drive cattle. We teach the men and women who they are. We teach them what they have in Christ. You're a new creation. Regardless of what the enemy tells you. Have you noticed that Satan doesn't tell you anything about your future? He's always telling about stuff you did last week, last year. It's under the blood. It's very important for us to remember the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Come on now. You just got to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life, over your family. Speak the name of Jesus. There is still power in the name of Jesus. Je Demons doesn't tremble at my name. Not my name. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Sometimes when you don't know what to pray, just say Jesus. Oh my, that's an entire sentence right there. Jesus. If you don't, you're not following me. Jesus. 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 Yes. And we give our students a vision for their lives. Hence, a transition home for the men and hopefully for the women. And we choose to celebrate our students' progress, however small it may be. God has given us a community. It's called the body of Christ. We are his hands and we are his feet. 
I thank him that he is the head of the body. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful and humbled. It's just, it's just refreshing to think about Jesus being the head and we're just members. And so that being the case, do you feel like Jesus Christ wants us to take care of orphans and widows and drug addicts and drunks? can only imagine the demoniac, right? The demoniacs of the gatherings. When they came in contact with Jesus Christ, they were delivered. And one was remarkably done. He goes, are you telling me I'm delivered? I don't have to live in the cave anymore? The scripture says he was no clothed and in his right mind. And he goes, Jesus, I want to follow you. You see, I want to follow you. There is something different about you. And Jesus said to him, words of truth. No, you don't have to follow me right there. Go home and go be an evangelist. I'm talking about the demoniacs. I'm talking about drug addicts and people who were broken and people who felt like life was over. You see, my mama used to tell me she's in heaven today. She goes, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll speak some Jamaican patois and then I'll make sure to translate in English, all right? She would say to me, boy, we're not dead, no dash way. In other words, if you're not dead... It simply means God is not done. He's not done. And I, and I feel this. I feel this in my heart. I really do. I, I was sitting there. So that's pretty much our mission defined. And we, we hope and pray with God's help. We will remain mission true. We're not a medical model. We're not blasting or putting down. Some people have to go get help in those places. But as the body of Christ, it is fitting for us to keep the mission true to the person of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's Jesus. Eternity is a very long time to be wrong. And we, we discovered that before we ended up there. Right? He was gracious towards us. And so if you're here, don't look at the person next to you. If you're here... I'm not talking about our students. You know that this was specifically for you. The Lord wants you to leave where you're sitting. I'm just telling you. Come to this altar. The man of God will, will play. And, and we want to pray for you. If it's just one person, I know you're here. Under the sound of my voice. You come forward. No condemnation. At all. We just want to pray with you, commit you to the Lord, and then hopefully we'll hear testimonies of the day when you walked from your seat down to the altar and God, you met God. You met God. So if that's you, the ABCs of salvation, I'm not going to force you to come, but come on down if that's you. Come on. You know who you are in the balcony, in the back here, whoever, whoever that person is. Come on. Come down here. I will not pray for you over the microphone. I'll pray for you uh, without the microphone because you probably have some stuff you want to say. And I won't put it on the microphone. All right. Thank you so much for having us. The Lord bless you.